Welcome back, folks. It'll be Phil Too Real. You're watching me play part two of the Crash Bandicoot 2, Crash Bandicoot 2 uh, playthrough. So, we got all the collectibles in Hangate. And then we're going to be treated to Crash's little dance here. And then our good old buddy pal, Dr. Neocortex, is going to chit chat with Crash. Three crystals. Not bad. Mm, thank you. I see you are getting the hang of it. Yeah, I think so. I need to conserve power. I will communicate with you again after you retrieve the fifth crystal. Mm, that's like two away, right? Anyways. Uh, I said I wouldn't do Crash's voice, but after hearing myself on the playback in the first part, uh, minus the later parts, I do I did actually enjoy it. So I want to try to imitate Crash's voice the way I think it is uh, in the first three games. I know he has a uh, voice in the later games, but yeah, uh, this is just what I think Crash sounds like. But anyways, that that uh, that little thing's over. But uh, we're in level four, the pits, and level four is pretty straightforward. Um, there is a split pathway in here, which I absolutely do hate those. I don't like running towards the screen in a Crash Bandicoot game. One of my least favorite things uh, in a Crash Bandicoot game. But uh, we got this mask, so it's going to make a lot of this part very easy. Um, what you do not want to do is you do not want to run into that arrow uh, box with the mask on your face. Otherwise, you're going to miss a box up there at the very top, I believe. We can go ahead and knock that Aku Aku box again and get, <laughs> get our invincibility. I like to go through the left path here. I find it's a little bit harder um, than the right, but I would rather go to the right than go through the left coming through the screen, or coming towards the screen, I guess I should say. So, take out all these enemies, take out all these boxes. This is very straightforward level. Very nice. Um, you want to, but you do want to go to the left because of that metal box. I believe that metal box uh, opens. Not opens, but it fills in a lot of the boxes either up ahead or on the right path. But I think it's on the right path now that I'm stopping and thinking about it. Hindsight's 2020, right? So go up here and then go ahead and double back to the right, and we can get some chests. Not chests. I keep saying chests. I'm over here thinking about. Um, uh, I can't think what RPG I'm playing right now. Uh, but anyways, uh, get the boxes. I think those boxes I just got there were the ones that got filled in. Final Fantasy VI, that's what I'm playing right now. Anyways, I digress. Uh, I'm not recording that. I'm just playing it for my own enjoyment right now. Maybe in the future, though. Uh, but, yeah. So, the turtles that have spikes on the sides, you can jump on top of their backs. So the turtles that have uh, chainsaws on their back, you want to slide into them. I think you can actually spin into them, but I just prefer to slide. I feel that's a little bit safer. So, just continue going back. Take your time. Don't go running full, full throttle. Like, take a few steps and then slow down or until you feel comfortable uh, that your reflexes are quick uh, i'm not saying mine are but i've played this game countless times growing up so um, now we're just going to go back which is going to be really easy so backtracking is one thing in crash bandicoot as you can tell we can we can get kind of hung up on but there are ways to minimize it yeah just continue on here go through here and then we need to get 53 boxes and we have 27 and as you can see, there we got 21 lives. This is level four, so lives are a plenty here. So just jump over the vulture. Uh, I think that was the first vulture we've taken out that did not have uh, us have invincibility. So you go through here, get the checkpoint box, continue on. You're gonna fall into this little pit with the moles. Just go ahead and spin, take them out, and then you know the mushroom will pop out, and then you can use that as a spring. So go through here. We get to the bonus level. Most level pretty simple, but we're going to be introduced to the metal crates here. And these metal crates, the only way to break it is with a belly flop. And a belly flop, you have to push the slide button in in midair, and then you'll do a belly flop, which will destroy all the boxes underneath you. And to get these boxes, what I like to, to get all the fruit possible, I guess I'm not going to do it, but to get all the fruit possible, what I like to do is I like to break the middle box, jump on it five times, get all the fruit, and then just jump over the third crate and on the way back get all the fruit from those boxes but go back here after you hit that box you get the extra lives and then you can spend um, your time jumping all these boxes and getting them you have to be very careful you don't want to break them in a way that you can't clear but then again you won't die in a bonus level you'll just re you'll spawn outside you can redo it again you'll keep all your lives you will lose an aqua aqua mask if you do die however so that's kind of no bueno 
So something I, I try to do there is I try to slide spin jump, but I didn't do it right. And some of these you might be able to get through with the spin jump. Other jumping, slide, and spin jump. I can't. I gotta look at what that name actually is. But I call it a. I call. I call it a slide and spin jump. But I'm sure there's another way. Maybe a super slide jump. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the community calls it. But we got our box jam. 53 out of 53. Now we can go and get out of here and place our awesome collectibles on the door of the pits. Because, you know, that level is definitely the pit. So, we're done. Crash is going to dance. I probably could just cancel these dances out, but I do really like them. So now we're going to go to. I think it's Crash Dash, I think. Uh, let's see. I forget what. No! Oh, yeah, I forgot. I did load by accident, so I had to replay that level over again. <laughs> uh, so don't do that. It's very easy to uh, to load instead of save. But now we're going to do Crash Dash, which is our first level where we're running entirely towards the screen. Um, and I do tend to get a little careless. I like to taunt the dangerous boulder that's going to be running towards us. So you want to keep on running. You don't want to stop because the boulder will crush you and kill you. Duh, right? And, don't do that. <laughs> uh, I tried to uh, slide jump, but I pushed my buttons the wrong way. I jumped, then I pushed the slide button, which resulted in me belly flopping into the coal. Uh, but one thing about the boulder and the uh, polar bear that will chase us later in the levels is you can slide to gain quite a bit of uh, speed and get ahead of the boulder quite a bit more. Those mines won't kill you, but they will slow you down tremendously, giving the boulder a lot of um, dis distance to cover so uh, the shocking fans you can actually I think you can actually spin or slide into the edges and break them but uh, I don't recommend doing that uh, just avoid them they definitely give you plenty of room to dodge uh, yeah and I'm really really dangerously uh, <laughs> spin jumping but um, yeah and the good thing about the boulder is if you miss any boxes on the way it will break the majority of them and they will count um, like those nitrous, for example, they they do count towards your box count. Um, when you get to a long uh, plank way like that, the boulder will fall all the way through, so you don't have to worry about it. So collect the crystal there, go to the bonus level, and there's 17 to get here. Be very careful here. If you get caught underneath that metal box, you will die, so that's no good. But then again, we're in the bonus level, so it's all fun and dandy until you blow yourself up with the TNT. So let's try that again, shall we? So again, just be very careful here. You don't want to jump in the middle of that metal box going down because the crash won't be able to break through that and you will die. Um, if you think that you're not going to be able to make that jump spin, you could just forego the extra life and just set up the TNT and it will blow that up. I'm going to go ahead and get, I think I'm going to get all the fruit I can possibly get here. So uh, five hits on these boxes that have the uh, openings that you see the fruit. And then just move on to the next one. On the last one, on the fifth jump, make sure you hold the jump button to get extra height. That way you can make it across more easy. Or easier. So, we got all the boxes. We got two extra lives. One with the extra life I got. And then another one with the Wampa Fruit. And these green little tiles, they will make you speed up and run faster. So that's always nice. Uh, you should be very careful with the mines. Again, one of the things I don't like about Crash Bandicoot. It's kind of... I, I, I feel personally that it's a lot easier in this version of the game than in the original one. I feel like the screen in the original one was pushed up a lot closer to crash, so you couldn't see a lot more of what's in front of you. Uh, those boxes, um, should I have it, I like to spin them, but you don't, I think you can just let them go and the boulder will break them and all of them will count. There might be a boulder or two that it may not get, which sucks because you'd have to play through the level again to get that gem, but that's it for Crash Dash. And so, oh, I didn't leave that, that loading in. Shame on me. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Crash is disgusted with that. So he's going to pull the crystal out from, uh, I'm still going to say it's his back jean pocket. Anywho, that's our fifth crystal. And I'm sure our beloved, okay, no, he's not going to do it in this game. Um, so after you get all five crystals, you open up the boss portal, which in the old version, you would go up into the next room and then the boss would attack you in between the rooms but i like this system a lot easier and here we're introduced to ripper who was also a boss in the first game i believe 
Uh, Boo's gained a lot more intelligence in the snazzy mustache. Um, actually, I think he had the mustache in the original game. But the, the strategy is as such. He'll lay a whole bunch of TNT. There'll be an open spot for you to stand in to be safe. And then he'll go a little bit uh, crazy, shall we say. I mean, he is in a straight jacket, right? Um, and then he's laying Nitro, which, of course, you don't want to touch. He will touch it, and then he will blow himself up. And that's your cue to attack him. And then you're going to rinse and repeat. Um, he'll lay TNT. And then you want to find a safe spot to go. And then go there. And then process repeats. He lays nitros. You don't want to touch the nitro. Stay away. Get an idea where he's going to lay those nitros. And then just wait for him to blow himself up. You can jump or spin into him. And I wonder where he's getting the top hat out uh, from after he knocks it off from the TNT. But again, same pattern. And it's the same pattern every single time, so you don't have to worry about it. You can just follow what I'm doing here to the letter, and then you don't have to worry about the uh, TNT or the nitros hitting you. Just be very careful. Give a little bit of healthy distance right there, and then spin into him or jump into him. Um, you don't have to do the high jump that I did there to avoid the nitro. I just did just because, you know, why not? And one little fun fact about uh, Ripperoo's level here, there's a lot of... Um, physics and mathematical equations which i think is kind of funny and cool at the same time math is one of my favorite subjects but i digress so that's it for part two i'll catch you in the next one folks later and bye